And now I'm handing over to Will to talk. Go on, Will. Okay, okay. Uh, we've, we have a guest today, Anna Marie Waite. And uh, I just wanted to introduce this by saying that we've been doing um, a, a sort of conference about radio. Uh, management theory at work in radio which we've done in, in, over the last couple of years and um, it sort of followed on from man management theory at work which was a, a conference in Lancaster uh, about 10 years ago um, during which Bron Bronwyn Rees spoke about uh, mindfulness as part of a management situation and I've been interested in that and tried to keep up with it. She's recently posted a, a chapter from a book, uh, East Meets West, which you, you can find, if you find the, the Wild Show Facebook page, you'll find a link to it, or if you look for her on Academica. But we're not going to be very academical today, I don't think. Well, I don't, I don't know, we might be. <laughs> Me and the word academic, I'm not sure they go together. <laughs> <laughs> I just mentioned that, because I think some of the same ideas are going to going to come up uh, in different ways but in a radio sort of style I think we're going to do a radio version of uh, a talk about management theory or where we're at and uh, some people will know you from, from doing shows here on Phonic would you sort of start off just to remind us what, what, what yeah, that was all, all I about I did a show here on a Sunday morning the early Sunday morning show for about four years and I gave it up at the end of last year just because I kind of needed a break but I've got to say, being back, I, it sort of feels like home. <laughs> <laughs> but my show was basically about kind of well-being and creativity, um, and mindfulness featured quite a lot um, in the in the show I was doing then. So, yeah. So thanks for asking me in to talk about it today. Well, eventually we'll get to how how you're shifting what you're trying to do and where mindfulness fits into that. Uh huh. But I don't know whether you want to start with that or get to that as we go along. Oh, you can save it for later if you want. <laughs> okay, okay. So what have you what have you been doing, and what are you what are you working on? Can I, let's start start at that end of it. So, um, so obviously, I, as I said, I kind of um, gave up doing my phonic show, but I'm a songwriter, so that's my my main profession is writing songs. And so, for the last couple of years, I've been working on songs for other people. Um, so that's like a really intense process. So I've worked on four projects over the last two years, where I've produced um, four songs and it, there's a whole process so you know it's all like going out interviewing people about the subjects um and yeah so that's kind of been keeping me occupied very occupied and I've just come to the end of one songwriting project and I feel like I can breathe now and think about where I'm going next so how did how did you decide on that or is that something you've always been doing what songwriting mm. uh so I started writing songs from the age of four uh, I always remember at school writing songs and kind of writing plays and singing and it's all I ever wanted to do. I just wanted to be Kylie Minogue. That was what I wanted to be and I was just, I adored her and I loved her so much. Uh, and then, yeah, and then I suppose I kind of carried on with my singing throughout school and drama. And then that kind of got lost somewhere after I left college and went into the nine to five world and just, just stopped doing it really. I thought that that's what you did. You just get a job and that's what you do you know and then when I got to 28 I sort of hit a point where I thought well I'm not happy doing this sort of job hopping never feeling satisfied and I just decided that I needed to try something new and that's how I fell into radio and then that's when I started writing songs again um, and so yeah I think if that's in you it never leaves you but it, it just kind of yeah I just feel really blessed that the songwriting came back and you, you, you're writing them for specific situations, is that right? Mm. A lot of the, the, the work is, is either sponsored or fits with a campaign? Or yeah, recently, um, initially when I started songwriting, it was very much about my own emotions and like my own life paths and experiences, and I'd done loads of that. And then I started, people started asking if I would write for um, things. So the first one was a dementia campaign, which I wrote for, which I was really interested in that. So that's a song called In The Moment. And then that led on to working um, with a mum's group. And the woman that runs that is very into kind of mindfulness. 
and then I wrote a song for a wedding um, and then my most recent project which hasn't um, the song's not been revealed yet um, we're still working on it at the moment and that's for a film which um, the subject is around cancer so yeah so quite diverse projects but it's just really interesting getting into the heads of other people and I just I find that really interesting so did, did that approach follow on from the radio in, in some way? Did yeah, well, ba basically, yeah. Um, I think through doing radio, I met quite a lot of people. And so that, and actually I met Gina through the radio um, who runs Extra Dementia Action Alliance. And that's how that, that first song kind of campaign began. Yeah. So perhaps we should we should have an, an, an example of one, one of your songs. Oh, we got, OK. We Do you got know what? I haven't... I haven't given you any of the ones I've written for the campaigns. I've only given you my own songs. Um, but, yeah, we have a couple of songs lined up. So one of them is called Don't Cry. Say something about that one, then. So Don't Cry <laughs> was written about a car. Okay. Shall I tell you the story after we hear the song? Okay, yeah. Do, 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 it, do it that way. 